Okay, I think we'll get started. Uh, so today we're just going to go through how to start a new project with the actual PIC 10F200. So we had already done a start a project uh, where we're just using the simulator. So here we'll go through the steps for the uh, when we actually want to program a, a PIC 10F2, uh, 10F200. So we'll see the wiring setup for interfacing with the PIC kit 5, and this would be true. This would be the same for a PIC kit 4 or 3 if you've got one of those. Uh, we'll see just a very simple wiring to the PIC 10F200, so we'll just simply light up a uh, LED. And we have another video where we do that as well. Uh, and then uh, just to get a chance to see a start from scratch new project. So let's go over to the circuit board and then to the program and see how this all comes together. So here we have our circuit board and I've set up this small board uh, with the wiring such that uh, it interfaces with the pick kit very easily. And so what we're doing here is the pick kit 5, and sorry it's upside down here, but that just to get it to lay correctly. Uh, has these six outputs and I've put a little uh, marker here just to remind myself uh, the ordering and that's given by this triangle on the picket 5 and then the wiring over here so yellow goes to the the yellow wire is on this side and I've colored that as well and this will just progress the way I've got this set up here, this will be just progress from one through six. And um, we can consult the, the pinout diagram to make sure everything is right. Uh, what we can do here is follow along with the uh, wiring so that you can set this up and then program your microcontrollers as you need it. So, <clears throat> We're going to use uh, the plus and the minus rails as a positive five and ground, uh, respectively. And what we're going to do typically is power the board uh, with its own external power supply. You can power with the pick, and we'll show how to do that in the software. Uh, and that's okay up to, I think, 50 milliamps. So you want to be careful, and generally you want to uh, power the um, device with the with its own power supply and uh, sometimes I forget but it's important to probably get everything set up before you hook up the power supply or turn the power supply on so uh, we've got the pick situated and, um, and this is just the eight pins only six of which are actually active and it's the second one down from the notch that goes to uh, the power ground on this side and uh, 5 volts on this side so we've got that um, positioned correctly and we can see here the notch uh, so to, we can get the correct pin orientation uh, and then we'll just go with um, pin this top pin over here will go to position 1 and so that will go that'll connect with the yellow and then position two will be the five volt source. Uh, and so what I've done is I've just put a jumper over here so that I can make a nice neat wire coming down to uh, pin two, five volt pin. Then pin three will go uh, to the second pin down. That's this purple wire here. Pin four from the PIC um, microcontroller will go down to uh, the last pin on this side. Uh, and finally, pin five will uh, again get jumpered across and go to the last pin on this side. Pin six is an unused pin, uh, so that's just an auxiliary pin uh, for other ways of communicating 
to different microcontrollers, but for the PIC, all you need is these five. So let's go ahead and put that in the correct spot. And so now we've got everything wired such that we can program the microcontroller. Now let's go ahead and plug the power supply in. And the LED might turn on here. Uh, it's already been programmed, but maybe it will, maybe it won't. OK, it didn't. Oh, sorry, it's not plugged in. Uh, so then what we should do is we can, most likely we're going to want to see if our program works before we finish it off. And so you can use the PIC kit 5 in circuit. And so let's go ahead and just take a very simple circuit where we'll light up an LED. So I'll bring this to output pin 0. And now when we will program this, we'll start a new project just to program this uh, to, turn, to turn the light on. OK. So uh, let's go ahead and um, go to uh, the IDE now. And start a new project. So we've got an old project here. Let's start a new one. So we go up here, click New Project, and Microchip Embedded Standalone Project. Next. Then uh, all the families. I can use Recently Used, and we see that come up. But let's go ahead and go to 8-bit uh, microcontrollers, and then we'll find our PIC 200. Now, here we did a video earlier where we chose the simulator. But we'll use the PIC kit 5, and we'll hit Next. Now, this is something, and on the data sheet, uh, it does say that the PIC 10F200 can be debugged in circuit, but I have not been able to, to do that successfully. So uh, I usually just debug with the simulator and then, uh, and then just sort of debug by, by trial and error uh, with, with the final product. So I, I leave this blank and go on to the next. And now if we want to program in C, we would choose uh, this compiler, uh, but we want to we want to program in assembly, so we will choose this and uh, hit next. Then we can give the project a name, so I'll just call this um, test with pick, and so that's the name of the whole project, and that's got that X after it to represent that. And now here we are, and um, we see here that this has become bold, which means that this is the main project. So while this file is up, if we were to try to run this code, it would be looking in the test with pick. So you want to always make sure that um, it's the main project. And what, if it wasn't, you can right click on this, um, and uh, you can say set as main project. So here we set it main project. And sure enough, this becomes bold. But we want our test with pick, so we'll go set as main project. And that then sets that as the project. Uh, first thing we want to do is create a new, I'm going to, I'm going to close this, create a new file. And so under source file, we right click. And we want an assembly file. If we wanted C, we could do C, C++, we could do C++. But we'll do assembly file. And I always just name these main. Uh, and then you, if you put .s, then it'll be .s, .s. But we want just main. And we'll finish. And here we are. So we've got nothing in here. Uh, and so we need to start setting this up with the boilerplate. So normally, we just copy and paste all that in. But uh, just to show here. Uh, we can uh, go to Window and then Target Memory Views and Configuration Bits. And so we can go to the Configuration Bits. And this allows us to set some things. So we will set the Watchdog Timer to Off. And we will set the Master Clear Enable to Off. Then what we can do is generate source code. And we just copy that. 
and that includes the uh, that also brings in the include file, the header files uh, that include the the sort of the translations for the PIC10 F200, so the opcodes for that. Now um, we need a little bit more here, uh, and so we need uh, to go to. I'm going to just copy this so that we you don't have to watch me type. So we'll put this in here. And what this does is it sets the, it just sets everything up. So um, it tells the program counter where to start and to start at main. Uh, and then when it resets, it would, it would go to main. Um, and we need one more thing here. And I'm going to just to make sure I will get the syntax right. I never, yeah, pretty simple, but I never write this. So I'll close this now. And we, we always want to end this, even though the program will never, if you write it for main per, for normal purposes, it will never get there because you'll always have this infinite loop. Okay, so now we're free to start our program. And uh, the, what, we, what we've been do, what we'll do throughout this series is to uh, just write main and then we'll have some stuff here and I'm just going to put this as no a uh, couple of no operations and we will um, copy that in uh, the stuff that we're always going to want to have in this first part of the program and the structure that I've adopted here is that we uh, have this bit for the main for the start of main and then we have the main loop And now let's just write a, a very simple program that will set the GP0 pin, which is what we've hooked up to the LED. Uh, so that'll set that to high, turn it on, and then go to main loop. And then um, I found that it's important at times to put a no op following the main loop, even though it'll never actually get to this line. And I'm not quite sure why that is, um, but this will ensure that it goes uh, to here. Otherwise, it'll it'll go up to here somewhere. And uh, I do show that in the other video where we just talked about the simulator. All right, so I think this is uh, probably all we need. So let's. Uh, build this and make sure it builds successfully so we're good and so now we're ready to write to the uh, PIC10 F200 and so we can use either one of these so uh, I'll just go ahead and I guess I'll, I'll use this one and build successful and it should connect to the programmer now we're going to get this alert that um, we want them they want us to verify that everything is at 5 volts so that we're using the proper microcontroller and so indeed we are using the 10F200 so this is fine and you can click to not show this again and uh, programming complete and uh, let's see it looks like might have a problem here And I probably have a error in the. Oh, let me let me actually. It might be that I'm gonna copy in uh, our boilerplate here. I don't think this is the problem, but I'll go ahead and copy this in. Uh, and in other videos, I talk about what all this is for. But this is to ensure that things are set properly as an output and input. And in particular, we want GP0 to be an output. And so that's zero, and that should be. Uh, an output. Uh, so when it's zero, it's an output. When it's one, it's an input. And so let's try this and see if this is what was the problem.
Yes. Okay. So uh, the, by default, apparently it sets that as a input, and that's why we had some trouble there. So that was a good thing to see, uh, and we fix it with setting the tris appropriately. Now, the I won't say too much about this, but uh, the tris is where the information about what these pins are as input and output uh, up here. Also. Uh, if we want to use GP2 uh, as an out as an input, uh, I, I think it defaults to uh, an external clock, and so uh, we use this literal. It's a binary literal, and the zero position here uh, sets the tells if if this is in the options, which is what happens here when we write the options command, option command, it will load this into the option register, and that will overwrite the default that GP2 is an external clock and actually set it as an input. And so we saw here that's important. Uh, our program, although it built correctly, didn't work because um, we didn't have the right settings up here in, in the top. And so this is stuff we'll always just put in our code. And I'll go through it each time just quickly to remind us uh, and for those who uh, just are watching single videos at a time. Uh, but this is an important step. All right, so this is how we start from scratch and program the microcontroller. And so we've seen now how to do it with the simulator. Now we've seen it uh, with the PIC itself. And so you're ready to go on to view some of the other videos where we do projects. And then soon you'll be on your way uh, to working with the PIC 10F200 and doing uh, and trying to get some of your ideas to work. With that, I think we'll end this discussion.